Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and happy Father's Day to all the good fathers out there who are handling their business and taking care of their children. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope you guys enjoyed your Father's Day with your children. So a lot of people had been hitting me up over the past 24 hours to talk about all the drama, honey, all the tea, honey, <laughs> that went down yesterday when I was minding my good black business yesterday on good old black Juneteenth, okay? Um, what went down is basically the baby, Meg the Stallion, Tory Lanes, Partisan, all these folks are beefing. And so people wanted a break. I've been kind of watching all this play out as I've been packing um, via social media. And I knew it was probably going to come to a head soon enough. So if you guys do not know, what went down is basically four days ago, the baby, uh-huh, Mr. 704, he posted a video of said, you know, entertainer that was supposedly canceled last year, Tory Lanez. So him and Tory Lanez dropped a new music video called Scat. I don't know why they named it Scat, because, you know, if you, you know, if you watch porn and stuff, Scat is not a good thing, but that's a whole nother video, hoodie. So anyways, um, this kind of goes back into January, you know, the season of Capricorn. And what went down is that rumors were circulating that the baby had linked up with Tory Lanez and that they were doing a song. So Meg the Stallion took to her Twitter page and she wrote nice try with laughing, crying emojis. And people started coming at her like, you're messy. You know, if they want to do a song, why do you care? And so then she wrote another tweet and she basically said that shit was old, not cleared, crybaby video dropping soon. So fast forward to cancer season, June, right? And so the baby, you know, posted the video four days ago, basically stating that he's doing the collab with Tory Lanez and here goes the video and the video was called Scat. And so it seems like Meg was not feeling that shit, especially after shutting it down in January, that they would still go behind her back and work on the song. And so Meg unfollowed him. Like as soon as the song dropped and it started floating around social media, she unfollowed him. And so a lot of people were like, damn, I thought, you know, they were really good friends. They were always hanging out together, taking pictures and things like that. So then what ended up happening is that basically Nicki Minaj crept and she liked the video. Now, I've talked about this before, like how Nicki will like things and then unlike them. OK, and that is what she did. She got caught liking the video of Tory Lanez and the baby. And this is a real like. Um, so here goes the receipt here. And so then shortly after that, Tory was super happy super gas so then he took to social media and he said the following if the queen can get on the scat remix it's gone i mean the song is already gone but that shit's at the moon after that she would def kill the beat too i was happy to see that she liked the video she's a real nigga than most niggas in our industry so he's confirming right there that nikki liked it so for all y'all arguing talking about it was fake it was photoshop it was not so then what ended up happening is that, you know, fans being messy. So one of the fans said this, and it was found under the baby's retweets. So this person says, I guess the baby, I guess at the baby and at Tory Lane's cool now because they both shot somebody and don't have to do no jail time. And then they had a bunch of laughing emojis. So the baby had retweeted that. And so when people saw that he retweeted that, People started dragging him. They were going off on him, saying that that's foul. So then the baby, he took to Twitter and he basically posted a video and he said this. I don't know what, what type of Illuminati shit Twitter got going on. I ain't retweet nothing. But if y'all want to promo, I ain't retweet that silly shit. Then once people started tagging me, I saw it and tried to delete it and undo the retweet and Twitter won't let me. What type of shit are y'all on? And then if you guys see in the video here, he's trying to unretweet it, but it's still showing that it's retweeted, which is, you know, kind of strange. So then 
he goes on to say, baby got enough problems of his own, my nigga. I don't got no reason to inherit the next mother effer's problems. Y'all chasing the story y'all ain't going to get. I'm out niggas business while successful in doing business. And at that point, Megan was like really upset, very irritated by everything. So this is what Megan said. Megan says, support me in private and publicly do something different. These industry men are very strange. This situation ain't no damn beef. I really wish people would stop downplaying it like it's some internet shit for likes and retweets. And then the baby replies back to her. The baby says, you don't let these folks get the best of you, thug. I don't got no bad energy for you. You and I know I ain't no industry nigga. Let them fool you into thinking that you tripping. Stand on what you stand on without feeling like I'm against you. Stay focused, my G. So then um, Meg Thee Stallion, a.k.a. damn Tina Snow, replies back and she says, my stance ain't never changed at all. Yours have. We already spoke about this in private and you specifically said that ain't no good business move. Why would I promote that shit? But now this ain't your beef. This ain't real, but you're going to stay on your business, my G. So that was Meg's response to the baby. And then the baby replies back and says, I don't even go back and forth with my own bitches on the net. Now I'm on this motherfucker going back and forth with another nigga's woman about some shit another nigga accused of. How the fuck that work? Y'all niggas hell. Happy Juneteenth, though. We started this bitch off with a bang, didn't it? Love you, Meg. Then at that point. Meg's boyfriend, y'all know tall ass party, honey, but with his big seven foot ass, he jumped in there. He's like, fuck this shit. You're not going to talk about my woman. OK, so party comes in. He's like, you a clown ass nigga doing clown ass shit, then trying to backpedal. Nigga, that's what it is. You don't ever got to address her again. So then the baby writes back. He says, you must not know about me. You must not know about me. In his Beyonce voice. So then Partisan says, this matter ain't about public opinion or internet beef. So a nigga let a lot of that weak shit slide. You niggas is corny. A lot of you women is corny. And any nigga that shoots a woman is pussy. Any nigga that sides with it, condones it, affiliates themselves, and would stand beside that type of behavior is a bitch. Any woman that supports it for any reason is a fucking sad, is fucking sad, bitter, or confused. So that is what Party had to say about the situation. So it got really crazy yesterday. Of course, the Internet was here for it because, you know, the Internet, they love mess, honey. You know, until bullets start flying. You know, they, they love drama. But then when them guns come out, they oh, no, we need peace. We're all black. Can we all get along? Right. So it was a bunch of mess. And, you know, I don't blame Party for jumping into it and taking up for Megan taking up for his woman and, and things like that. Um, you know, do I believe that this was an accident with the baby? He accidentally retweeted it. And for some reason, Twitter wouldn't unretweet it. Um, these social media apps do act really funny, you know, so I, I've seen little funky stuff like that happen. But I do believe he low key retweeted it because he thought it was funny. I don't think he looked at it as something serious. I think he just retweeted it because he thought it was a funny tweet. Which it's not funny, but, you know, I can see the, the comedy in it, too. You know, whatever. Dark humor. Right. So, yeah, I, I do believe that. I don't want I, I don't even believe that it was some type of glitch in the Matrix, because let's not forget, this is the same man who had no problem when his. uh Well, you might as well say, babe, mama, honey, because she's clearly knocked up. I've told you guys that I've showed you guys pictures. Danny Lay is pregnant. And the last person she was fucking with was the baby. So I'm assuming that he's the father. Right. So. When Danny Lay, when Danny Lay released her song, talking about a yellow bonus, what he like, what did he do? He went on there and posted three yellow balls. OK, basically co-signing that. Yes, a yellow bone is what I like. But then as soon as Danny Lay got backlash, as soon as she got drugged by social media, he didn't want his brand affected. So he not only deleted those three yellow balls, he also got rid of Miss Yellowbone. OK, he stopped fucking with her after that, left her high and dry. And this is somebody who's pregnant with his child that he's not dealing with. Maybe he talks to her behind the scenes, but he damn sure don't do with her in public no more like he used to. Remember, they were brushing each other's hair and doing all that lovey dovey shit, honey. But when she got that backlash, he left her high and dry. So this is my thing. OK, I've noticed that a lot of these blogs are now turning on Megan and they're acting very funny towards her. Now, one thing about me is I've always kept the same energy, okay? 
I've always had my issues with Megan and the moves that she made. I felt like she was very mixy. She had a very busy energy and she was social climbing and bopping from one person to another person to another person. But when I was saying this a year ago, I was mean. I was in the wrong. How dare you say that she's mixing energies and running with too many people? There's no such thing as social climbing. You know, I was, you know, cussed out by her little hotties and drug. But now it's funny that these blogs are now basically trying to say the same thing that I was saying. What I find very interesting about this situation, if you guys don't know, the Shade Room, um, Neighborhood Talk and Gossip in the City, they all ran to post this clip. It was on Twitter floating around, but they all ran to post this clip of Meg Thee Stallion being interviewed last year by WGCI. And they were asking her about the whole WAP situation and if she had to get like an OK from Nikki, because we know she was running with Nikki at first, talking about a hot girl summer. And then, you know, she decided to hop on Cardi's team and do WAP. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the clip real quick of her talking to WCGI. And even Nikki first, like, I don't want you to hear about it, but I'm working with Cardi, or that is, like, all over. Um, I didn't feel like I had to call her first. Um, I mean, because at the end of the day, I'm still an artist, and I should be free to work with whoever I want to work with. Um, my personal relationship with anybody doesn't affect, like, what I choose to do as an artist. All right, so you guys just heard that clip. So now I find that very interesting that they're now using this. This is what they wrote. They said, fans are circulating this clip of Meg Thee Stallion discussing WAP following an exchange that she had with the baby earlier after he appeared to retweet a post regarding him and Tory Lanez. Roommates, all things considered, do you think it's a fair comparison being that it goes beyond music? So I feel like they knew what they were doing. And this is my take on it. You cannot compare her working with Cardi B on WAP you know, against Nikki to the same thing as the baby working with Tory Lanez because her situation is she felt like her and the baby were very close and she was actually shot in the foot by Tory. So she thought their friendship was strong enough to where he, where he wouldn't even associate with Tory. Now, as far as the song situation, that's different because it's a song. Like I said, to me, I'm always going to keep my same energy. I do feel like she's social climb from Nicki Minaj over to Cardi B. It is what it is. And honestly, her social climbing to Cardi B benefited her way more than her social climbing to Nicki Minaj. And I think that's where a lot of the drama and the issue comes from with all the shots and back and forth that her and Nicki are throwing on each other on record and the likes and the just the different things floating around social media. I think what's happening now is that she's starting to face a lot of backlash from not only the blogs, but people in the industry and they're now trying to go back and say, she's a mixie. She's social climbed. All the things I was saying a year ago, now they're trying to throw it on her. And the reason why they're doing that is because Meg Thee Stallion is now at the top. And unfortunately, once you get to the top, the same people who put you on this pedestal, who helped you rise to the top, are now scrambling to tear that pedestal down and bring you down. But they've done this since the beginning of the music industry. Just like with Michael Jackson, he was the king of pop. They brought him up there only to steadily tear him down. And I think that's what Megan is going through right now. And it's really sad, you know, because I think at this point, she's finally waking up to what I have been saying from day one. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.